Welcome, fellow painters. So much like a little chicken, especially now that he's yellow. Usefulness is very specific. <laughs> We're getting the, just the right pineapple for your pizza. Set it up. So, Tony, why have you been so quiet about your drinking issues? All right. You guys got me right in the heart. <laughs> We are back. I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. And this is Painting Happy Little Minis. Two. Two. <laughs> Paint harder! Paint harder! <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Yeah. Harder, faster, <laughs> stronger, paintier. Paintier. More paint. Yeah, more. More paint. More, more of everything. <laughs> for sure. It's going to be cool. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be, um, it's going to be very interesting. Two hours. Two hours. A two hour show. Yeah. Uh, we're going to uh, muddle through today. We're going to introduce a couple of new things. Yep. Uh, and then we'll also be asking in the chat some other things that you'd like to see introduced. Yeah. I think we'll be doing that. Speaking of chat, hi everyone in chat. Oh, we have quite a few. Hi, RuneStorm on, tw uh, I was about to say Twitter. <laughs> on the YouTube? <laughs> on the YouTube. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever we are, whichever social, it's all the same. It's all the same. It's all the same. It is. Eventually it will be. Guten Tag, Dave. <laughs> Guten Tag. Chris, yeah, he said Guten Tag. Oh, okay, Fine, cool. Good to, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris, Sarah, Joshua, Michael, everyone. Excellent. Fantastic. We're all here. That's good. Yeah. Nice. What are we painting today? Uh, today, we are going to be painting some stuff from uh, Song of Ice and Fire. So we've got the uh, Baratheon starter set, uh, which the folks at uh, Come On were nice enough to mm -hmm. provide me with at uh, Gen Con. Very nice. Very cool. Uh, so I've been looking at this and waiting for this moment that we're going to be able to <laughs> going to be able to paint it. Um, but just before I jump into that, if it's cool, I'm going to talk quickly about this big blue thing. At oh, the you front. mean that big blue thing? The big blue thing. The thing. <laughs> just so we can get that out of the way, we can get that done. Um, at the beginning of the year, um, I can't remember what it was. It might even January, February, um, March, maybe. I brought in. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> the, the sort of the superstructure of of this beast, um, mm -hmm. the storm bird uh, that I was working on, because somebody was asking about sub assemblies, mm -hmm. painting things in sub assemblies. So, because this is uh, such a big model, um, painting it in sub assemblies was definitely required. Uh, and of course, all through the process, I just wanted to stick everything on, and stick it all <laughs> together, so it can fly it around the room. Uh -huh. But, As uh, you do. Yeah. Is it even worth it if you can't just zoom? It's not at all worth it if you yeah. can't fly it. Definitely not. Uh, but yeah, it's finally finished. It, it, took, it took me a long great. time. <laughs> um, I'm really, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And you were saying that this is the most airbrushing that you've ever done. Yeah, on a, um, on a single model. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's because it's probably one of the largest models I've done. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, over the last six months, I've talk to a lot of people who use airbrushes and um, started to build up my confidence on using my own airbrush. Uh, and then, yeah, just went to went to town on this. I spent a lot of time building up the blue first. Oh yeah, and you can really tell. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it was a lot of fun to, to go through and build it up in layers, uh, get to the, find the right points to put those, the highlights in with the airbrush, the nice fine lines. Uh, and then once I'd painted painted at all, including the, like the silvers and the, the black stripes and the, the golds, I went back and this was the most nerve-wracking part for me, was um, <laughs> painting the shadows mm -hmm. in. So uh, on the screen you can see like in along these sort of areas here, um, underneath some here, anywhere that, where there is a, a shadow, I just wanted to punch that a little bit further. Uh, so I mixed in some brown, reddish brown, into a, the dark blue to get that extra shading sort of color. It's got a little bit it of a looks, purple tinge. It, it looks worn, but it doesn't look cruddy. Right, like, yeah. 
Like it's a, a machine that has been out and about, but it's obviously like well taken care of. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's got some scratches and, and dings on that it, uh, on there with the um, you can't quite see them on the the big shot there, but uh, yeah, with a really I did those scratches with a really bright silver. But uh, but you're right. If it was a, a like a tank mm -hmm. or something that had been driving around on the ground, I would have put a lot of weathering powders onto it, built those up from the tracks and that kind of thing. But because this thing flies. Yeah. It's not going to get too dusty. <laughs> Hopefully <But> not. <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm you really. You say that now the crew is going to fly directly into like a dust storm. Like that's. They should totally that's do that. Yeah, like that's, the one out of uh, yeah. Fury Road. Yeah. Yeah, that big wall of dust. <laughs> uh, yeah. I could do that. I've, I brought my that's weathering also, powders with me. By the way, just the in sound case. that makes as it flies, I just. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> give you like a recording of a bunch of different sound effects for the next next time you play. Just that'd be awesome. Yeah. And I have to I'd, if I could break this open, put a little speaker in there, an MP3 <laughs> player, uh, and go crazy. But uh, yeah, really, um, really super happy with how this turned out. Um, the uh, ooh, the cop comes off, oh. so you can see the dudes inside. Um, I didn't hinge any of the the doors, um, just because there's. There's a lot of them. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to do inside, but I didn't actually uh, end up Does that make this a inside. work in progress still? No, just no. Go this back, hinge every single door, paint. This, this is done. This is done. Yeah. There's about a pound of uh, green stuff in there on the gap filling because it's so many resin pieces, and all those resin pieces shrink a little bit. Mm -hmm. But they all shrink by about like like four, uh, three to four percent. Mm -hmm. But when you have a piece that's this long and it shrinks, mm -hmm. shrinks a bit. And when you have a piece this long and it shrinks a bit, the the spacing yeah, come, sort odd. of comes off. So um, yeah, there's quite a bit of uh, gap filling. But once that was done, I could just prime it and let it sit there and until my soul recovered mm. and uh, got it painted. So anyway, uh, now I can move that out of the way. Oh, uh, actually, just there will be fine. That's cool. <laughs> it's out of, almost out of shot. It's, it's, it, 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 yeah. And now we can put that in shot. <laughs> and we can get back to talking about Baratheons. Woohoo! Yes. Cool. So thank you all for indulging me. <laughs> in enormous. You've got you had a lot Stormbird. of a lot of yelling in the chat. Yeah. The Stormbird. Long live the Emperor. Woohoo! Everyone says beautifully done. Great job, Dave. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Rune Storm says it looks up really good. Hey, Kat, yeah. how you doing? Um, okay, cool. So where do we get to? We got through back to the Baratheons. Yes. Thank you for that little break. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got that. Uh, I was just talking with uh, Pete from Come On uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, the box set, the, so the Baratheon starter set, mm -hmm. uh, will be released in October. And it should be uh, $99.99. Oh, that's so really good. 100 bucks. Yeah. Uh, Quick look inside the box. Like all of the um, the one player or one person starter sets, it has a rule book. It has templates, tokens. It's got the terrain, two D terrain templates, the rulers, all that kind of stuff, which looks cool. It has. Oh, these are some of the corpse piles. <laughs> it comes with its very own corpse piles. Oh, it does. It comes with its own corpse piles. Excellent. So all of the all of the starter sets come with these. Um, when when you're fighting near these, mm -hmm. uh, your units suffer uh, minus one morale because obviously just minus one. Morale. Just minus one. <laughs> but I mean, if you had two of them nearby, that would be minus two if you're sitting in the middle of them. So if you strategically placed all of your corpse piles. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a, there's a scenario um, which I cannot remember the name of at the moment, but it has basically when units die. Mm -hmm. Or units are removed from the table, you replace them with a corpse pile. <laughs> so you end up with a whole table full of corpse piles, yes. So, but it also has. Ooh. This packet. Oh, and that looks go. like it is completely filled with minis. It is. It's completely sandwiched there. So, I have. Uh, so, with the Song of Ice and Fire. Models, they're all they all come with a in a particular color, color mm -hmm. plastic per um, faction. So these guys, oh, I should turn the spinner on. 
Oh, Johnny's going to do the spray cam. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> now that the big blue bird is out of the way. <laughs> we got it, Johnny. Good. Okay. Try it. There we go. So the uh, Baratheons are in um, the, like a pale yellow, mm -hmm. a sort of creamy yellow. Uh, to match their, well, I mean, their colors in the, the book are yellow and black. So um, this is a nice way to represent them if you, if you aren't painting them or you haven't got around to painting your models just yet. Uh, you can go with, leave them in that, in that yellow. But there are loads and loads and loads of minis in here. Just like with the other starter sets as well, it's got four different units. Um, so this one has the one unit of Stag Knights. Which that is, kind of is a, what I am painting. Yep, one of them. You paint one yep. of those guys. So the uh, they have the antlers and the the double handed hammers. Uh, there are the sentinels, which have the two two hammers uh, a piece, and then two units of wardens, which have the hammer and shield. So he looks like he's he knows more about what he's doing. Okay. He's in a, oh. a more action. I can approve of his action. Pose. His action pose. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was critiquing the action poses <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Yep, uh, it was uh, basically kind of the answer for everything was, I'd yeah, uh, just stab him. him. Yeah, They're, all of them, him. the ones that he pulled <laughs> are all like super over committed, like very, very like, please stab me kind of poses. <laughs> but look, he's online. He's, he's covering his bases. Right, yeah. cool. I could fear that man. Okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just want to paint this guy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's what we've got there. I, I went through and uh, primed these with the GW uh, Wraithbone paint, um, mainly thinking that uh, we'd be painting a lot of bright yellow for the cloaks and the shields and that kind of thing. Uh, but of course, then I open up the, the box and I look at the cards. Didn't and you? they've got lots of uh, silver. Yeah, silver and so, like off yellow. Yeah. It shines yellow. I yep. think it used to be yellow. It used to be yellow. It's a little yeah. bit dirty now. Yeah. That's... Yep. Was I once. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to go with bright yellow anyway. Well, at least I am. <laughs> I go with cool. bright yellow. I'm so, fine with that. Yeah, let's jump uh, jump on in, I guess. And I think during... I've got the um, the cards. All wonderful cards for the different models and the different units. So we can talk about those uh, during the, the stream. Oh, hey, Rick is joining us. Rick is joining us? Yeah, from beyond. From beyond? Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Rick. God rest his soul. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, he says, who are the commanders? <laughs> is, that a, is that a Kurt as well? Yeah, that's a Kurt. <laughs> Kurt. Well, Kurt's no longer dead because he moved from Ohio to Florida. Oh. So he's, a, he's alive again. He's, Just he's like an old man now, though, because, you know, only old people live in Florida. Old, old people in Florida, man. <laughs> so Kurt is definitely going to be Florida man. <laughs> But yes, yes. Um, so, what was the question? Sorry, who are the commanders? Uh, who are the commanders? The commanders in this uh, in this set are well, no real surprise. Um, Renly and Stannis are the two two commanders. The um, where are they? Yeah, here we go. Renly and Stannis. So I can put their put their cards under the the close cam. Ooh. Almost a close cam. There we go. Uh, cool. So one of the important things there is uh, loyalty, that loyalty rule. With the Stannis Baratheon, your army may never include units and attachments with different loyalties. Hmm. So uh, all the, the four units that come in the box are all loyalty uh, Baratheon, I think. Uh, yeah, they're all essentially Baratheons. But you wouldn't be able to have Stannis Baratheon and Renly Baratheon in the same army. All right. Of course, they're they don't like each other. And later on, if they release any units that are like Renly Baratheon only, like his um, his guard, his mm -hmm. king's guard, you wouldn't be able to use those in a Stannis Baratheon list. You probably couldn't use uh, Sir Davos. Either in so what would be the uh, 
like the the good points of using this particular set then? Oh, this uh, particular army. Um, yeah. Lots of hammers, really is is the big one. <laughs> lots and lots of hammers. Uh, my favorite so far, as far as the commanders go, has been uh, Renly. So he has um, boldness and courage. When this the unit that he's with makes a melee attack, is always treated as having one additional rank. Ooh, so the, that's the really nice. Yeah, that's so nifty. It keeps you keeps you higher there. And if it already has full ranks, it rolls plus two attack dice. That's really nice then. So if he's in a unit of stag knights, actually stag knights probably wouldn't be the best because they are always they always fight with seven attacks regardless of how many ranks they have. Uh, Baratheon wardens. Uh, so if you, he's in a unit with three ranks of Baratheon wardens, they'd have nine attacks hmm. with their hammer. Baratheon Sentinels, with the the two hammers, yeah. needing three plus to hit, they would be at um, they would have ten attacks. At so that'd be really nifty. Full strength. Yep, definitely good. And uh, while within short range of this unit, other friendly units gain plus one to morale test tests. So that's very cool. But in his tactics cards, that's where he really shines. Um, so when Ranley Baratheon's unit, act, or one of them, uh, they will they will make me king. Uh, when Renly Baratheon, Baratheon's unit activates, choose one. So either restore up to two wounds uh, to Renly's unit and up to one wound on all other friendly units within long range, which is within 12 inches. Mm -hmm. So that far from his unit. Okay. So that's, that's quite long a, range. That's quite a big yeah, that's uh, long range. Quite a big sweep. Uh, or you can deal two wounds to all enemies engaged with Renly's unit and one wound to all other enemies within long range of Renly's unit. So it's a, a fantastic one for, um, for just chipping away at, um, at the enemy, which is great. And some of the others that he's got in here, Wealth and Charisma, um, Younger, Bolder, and Far More Comely. <laughs> When a friendly combat unit makes a morale test, that unit gains plus two to their morale test roll. Uh, if they are within long range friendly Baratheon's unit and pass this test, they restore up to one wound for each point they passed by. I feel like that's of four. just... So, definitely friendly Baratheon's units uh, will hang around a lot longer, which is nice. So, yep, question Ooh. from YouTube. Oh. What primer do you use in winter? Uh, I use the same primers that I use in summer. But, uh, so winter, the, the biggest problem with um, priming and temperature is, uh, sorry, priming and the external temperature is uh, the temperature of the, can. let me start all that again. <laughs> I uh, believe in you. You can make words. I can do it. I can put the words together in the right order as well. Uh, so. The temperature of the can is the most important thing, mm -hmm. the, the, prime, the can that you're priming with. So if you, you keep your can spray can indoors, uh, where it might be warm or reasonable, it might be like high 60s, low 70s, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, when you, you can take it outside and prime without any issues, even if it's like very cold, 30s or 40s and that sort of thing. If you were to leave that can outside, and then come back at like an hour or two later and try to use it, it's going to be terrible. You won't have, uh, won't get good results at all. Uh, so yeah, pretty much I use the same, exactly the same primers. Uh, it's just a matter of how you treat that, that can. Make sure you always bring it inside. It should always live inside rather than out in an unheated garage or uh, anything like they're that. They're cold. They if are. you're cold, they're cold. <laughs> if you're bring cold, bring them, them in. inside. <laughs> exactly. Treat them just like your pets. Maybe. For just pennies a day, you too can save this can of primer <laughs> from the harsh conditions of winter. Send your money to <laughs> sanitaylor at gmail.com via PayPal. Oh, and <laughs> that plays, and then you just see all the sad paintbrushes too. <laughs> <laughs> you could help repair this poor paintbrush's bristles. Sarah McLaughlin starts playing in the background. Yeah. You're just, just enamored with, play, with putting hair on anything, aren't you, John? Yes. <laughs> Always. <laughs> the saddest song ever. Uh, but yeah, so uh, you can do that. Um, the other thing you could do is pick up a spray booth. There are small spray booths that you can get. 
Um, they basically have extractor fans and they draw the, the particulates away, which is the main thing you want to avoid when you're doing lots of spraying. Uh, those portable spray booths are generally for airbrushing, but you can at a pinch. You're so use, much more uh, meticulous. Like when doing your setup, when I when I had to prime things in school, I just went to the backyard and I was like, "This is how it's gonna be." <laughs> I yep. actually made my uh, my finger go numb once using right. a spray okay. can. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of spray. Yeah, that's a lot of spray. <laughs> yeah, it's an art project. <laughs> it was a, it that's wasn't cool. a bunch of minis. It wasn't just me on the same mini being like prime, prime, prime your I, work. I built up seven hundred oh. layers on this Shh. mini. Is that enough? No. No. <laughs> 701. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's what I'd recommend there. Uh, also, if you do have a space where um, you can be a little bit cheeky, like I do in my basement, in the laundry room, <laughs> uh, that's where I do all the priming. So I do it all inside. Living in Maryland, there's lots of humidity. Humidity can also affect priming. So you try to avoid that as much as possible. But yeah, so that's where we go. Hopefully that answers the question. Cats has another good reason to live in uh, Southern California, rarely below 50. They're all good reasons, really, apart from the traffic. Apart from the traffic. SoCal was nice when I was there. Yeah. If it wasn't far away, I'd live there. <laughs> Wait, so if it was much closer, yeah. like next door, yeah. <laughs> you'd have to be no but reason to. I could just to. pop on over. <laughs> pop on over to SoCal. The invalid, uh, invented teleportation. Well, yeah, that'd be the, that's the perfect thing, really, isn't it? If they do that, we'll have it all sorted. But, uh, yeah. How is yours? Oh. Uh, How's mine you going? Got, well, I have I, yellow. It's like banana yellow right now, but I'm gonna rough it up. It's not gonna stay banana right, yellow. Okay. <laughs> this is the cloak when it's brand new. Brand like, new. Super right. brand new. <laughs> One of the um, one of the cool things on the on the box, uh, the way that the art has been done, and the uh, or yeah, basically the, the way that the cover art's been done with uh, Stannis and Renly. Um, Renly has a it's a green banner with um, the yellow stag on it, Ooh. and uh, Stannis has the a yellow banner with the the red heart and the um, the black stag on it. It's like for the Lord of Light. But uh, obviously when you're painting these, you want to have that flexibility. You might not want to commit to Stannis or Renly. Um, but what you could do is for any of the, um, any of the models that have, here we go, like some of this quilted armor here, or, um, where was the guy I saw earlier? Here he is. So he has some, um, this model has some, like a tunic underneath his scale mail. Uh -huh. You could paint that tunic in a, like a light yellow green Ooh. kind of thing, or a desaturated green. And that would still give you that sort of strong, a good connection between the, between the two. Uh, Kat says, Dave, are you using a contrast paint? Uh, I am at the moment. So it's, it really is the quickest, easiest way to do a nice bright yellow. So I'm using the uh, Iand and yellow contrast paint. Paint that directly onto the, the cloak. I'm just getting brown everywhere. Yep, you're doing your eyes uh, sort of for the quilted. Yeah, he's doing a little bit of quilted, and then he has that scale mail, and I don't really know how I'm going to go about more with the colors there, but I'm going to figure it out as I go. Cool. That'll be good. I think that's going to be the, uh, the the initial theme for yeah. Painting Happy Little Minis 2, Paint Harder. <laughs> no, you have to say it right. Paint Harder! Paint Harder! Yeah, Dave, come on. Get it together. I need to have some more whiskey <laughs> and some cigars. Paint Harder! I don't know about whiskey. We could probably get you like a, a glass of apple juice. Sure. <laughs> That'd be fine. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, I think the yellow might be the only, um, only contrast paint that I need to use on these. Oh, great. 
I just noticed that I could I could do his sleeve as well. Oh. With a um, with a uh, green. Yeah. I am trying to detail yeah. all the time. I'm trying to take my time now. I'm like, I don't have to rush. Yep. Like, what are my full capabilities now? <laughs> we will find out. Indeed. I'll still be rushed. <laughs> yeah. Five minutes till, and I'll be like, no, no. How did I? <laughs> how did I work with that? How did this happen? Well, I, I keep thinking that it's like, okay, well, I, if I don't finish it today, I can just come back on Thursday. And it's like, oh, nope. This is just Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm gonna have to be very careful. Just, I mean, well, you Just still Thursday. will be coming back on a Thursday. I will. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, we might. Uh, <laughs> we might have a break halfway through. But uh, yes. Thursday still happens. It we didn't did. get rid of Thursdays. This is true. And apparently, it's gonna be Thursday all day. Ooh, well, that's fun to hear. Here we go, this guy. Have fun. I think, so I think this is one of the, this is the Sentinel, um, what's his name? Let me find Sentinel, the, what's Sentinel, his name? Sentinel, what's his name? The, not the Master Warden. Oh no, okay. Maybe not. Perhaps this unit doesn't have a uh, particular sort of leading character. So. Yeah, I should have started. Have I should have started this season by actually bringing my glasses. <gasps> I should have done that. Yes. <laughs> As I bring the miniature closer <laughs> and closer to my face. And you find <laughs> happy little maze too. Paint blinder. Paint blinder. <laughs> That's what we're saying. Uh, when you said paint harder, I took it as an, a literal <laughs> challenge. <laughs> paint blinder. You're like, uh, hook me up with that whiskey. <laughs> So, no, that's Paint Drunker. Paint Drunker. That's a different show. Yeah. Which I'm sure exists somewhere. <laughs> Again, just saying. <laughs> Radio. But yeah, knowing that I'm going to go back and sort of paint over the the armor plates with colors that aren't contrast colors, mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to just sort of run along and splash this this yellow all over. The cloak there. And not be worried too much. I try really hard not to worry whenever I splash paint around. But right. <laughs> I've, I've learned very quickly that my splashing of paint and your splashing of paints are <laughs> it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when I splash paint around, I splash the whole bottle. I was going to say, you know how we, we have to get rid of those mats? <laughs> Just that, just the green one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's all good. Kurt says, why, why don't I have the patience to paint my own minis more regularly, but I have plenty uh, watching others do so? Uh, it's a lot easier. It's, <laughs> it's so much easier to, uh, to watch others do things. It's just passive entertainment. <laughs> right, you don't have to work to it. But I've, I kind of felt that way when you were on the show, Kurt. Was that Kurt who said that? Or was uh, it, oh, different Kurt. Different Kurt, there's, okay. a, there's a few different. There's, <gasps> there's a different Kurt? Okay, it's not the, not the Kurt I was thinking. Okay. I still, I felt that way when Kurt was on the show. <laughs> Kurt with a K. But, uh, I'm good. Pardon? So one, one person in the chat is Kurt Cover from Smurf and Dagger. Okay. Cool. Radio. So I'm going to let those dry a little bit uh, and just talk quickly about these units. Should I talk about them? Yes, talk about and what them. they do. Which what one should we start with? Should we start with the Stag Knights? Talk, yeah, I, I like them. I, I like the antlers. I feel like that would be a hefty thing. I don't know how I feel about wearing antlers to battle. Right. But okay. I feel like it's a plus two to intimidation. Oh yeah, it's definitely. This guy comes it's out that. coming at me, I'm gonna be like, oh, that's antlers. Particularly, <laughs> particularly when he lowers his helmet and charges. <laughs> yeah. I'll make my deer call and <laughs> run. I don't I don't know. That's the way you should do it, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna try and read this upside down so that everybody can see it on the screen. There we go. Uh, one of the things that 
that actually really amuses me about the stag knights mm -hmm. is their name. So in uh, Australia and England and probably several other Commonwealth nations, a stag knight is a, like a bachelor party. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So they're knight. there to party. They're there to party. Yeah. Definitely. Because somebody's getting married soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably Renly Baratheon. So uh, up here, their movement is five, which is pretty, uh, pretty reasonable for uh, most infantry. Uh, Unwavering Fury is their melee attack. Uh, so they need three plus to hit. Uh, and you can see there, seven, seven, seven. So it doesn't matter how many ranks they lose, they always have uh, seven attacks. Uh, their armor value is four plus, which is all right. It's pretty good. Uh, they don't have a shield. Uh, but they do have the the heavy armor, and when we get to the Baratheon Wardens, you'll see that their armor and shield gives them a three plus. But anyway, uh, morale of five plus, that's really good. Uh, so that's quite cool. But Unwavering Fury, so this is their melee attack. When this unit attacks, uh, for each of its destroyed ranks, select one of the following bonuses. Mm. So this is even better, so yeah. You kind of want to go in with just one rank. You're hitting it full strength, and you might either have a critical blow, so rolls of a six cause two hits. Uh, sundering, the defenders suffer minus one to their defense rolls. Uh, or vicious, defenders suffer minus two to their panic test, which mm. could lose them an extra extra couple of models. So that's, uh, that's very cool. It's not just those. me who panics at the sight of, of an antlered man. No, obviously not. Well, everybody... I almost did not say antlered man. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to ask what you were going to say. <laughs> I'm not going to ask. Excellent. Um, were you going to say pointy stag? No? Okay. No. <laughs> uh, Baratheon Sentinels. Oh, somebody. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, Baratheon Sentinels also move five. Uh, they have their double hammers. So also three plus to hit, which is very good. Uh, eight for their full ranks. Six when they lose a rank. And four when they lose two ranks. Uh, and they automatically have Sundering, which is the defenders are minus one to the defense saves, which is kind of the the shtick for, um, for hammers. But uh, save a four plus, just like the Stag Knights. Their morale is a seven plus. That's pretty good. So it's uh, it's still all right. That's, that's kind of in the, in the middle. Yeah. Um, they are also six points rather than the eight points that the Stag Knights are. And then finally, uh, Unit-wise, so there are two of these units in the in the box. These are five points each, which is uh, pretty cheap, really, for what they what they give you. Uh, movement of four, so they're a little bit slower. Four plus to hit with their Warhammer. Seven, five, and three for their uh, attacks by ranks. Uh, so for those of you who are watching who aren't familiar with Song of Ice and Fire, uh, each infantry unit has three ranks, and if you have all three ranks there, uh, or at least somebody in that rank, uh, you get seven attacks. Um, if they are down to two ranks, five attacks. Down to three ranks, three attacks. Uh, they have a three plus save, which is great, and six plus uh, morale, which is also nice. The Warhammer, if the defender rolls a one on any defense saves, they become weakened, which I believe is uh, you can force them to re-roll. Let me check. It's here, I know what it is. Okay, yeah, uh, so they get a weakened token, and then when they attack, are gonna attack back, you can expend that token to force them to reroll any or all of their attack dice. So typically that's chosen, like, you go through, okay, which ones hit? All of these ones? Reroll those ones that hit. So it's quite good. And uh, target opening, when this unit attacks, it may expend weakened tokens from the defender, is if they are vulnerable tokens. So that's nice. So you apply a weakened token, and then if you want to, you can use it as weakened or vulnerable, which means they can they have to re-roll defense dice, any successful defense dice. So quite a nice um, sort of set of abilities there for those uh, for the Baratheons. They're uh, pretty good defense and pretty solid number of attacks. On a regular basis. Where's that other one? So I mentioned that um, 
the green before. Uh -huh. What I'm going to mess around with for my green on these is using contrast paint, which is um, Militarum green. So I'll give that a go. Because this yellow is very, it's nice and vibrant. I'm, I'm dirtying up my yellow a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna oh, cool. Yeah, Excellent. Just uh, like a little. Are you putting in some of the Nasdreg yellow over it? I am, so that cool. uh, it doesn't look quite so vibrant if he's out on the battlefield being badly and whatnot. Yep. As, as, you, you, as you do yeah. <laughs> on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Okay. I don't know what you do on the battlefield. Um, but I'm being battling. You're, you're battling. You're doing the battling. It seems like the right thing to do. Okay. Uh, Walter says, these minis would go good with Pendragon. And one inch hero says, I've been wanting to use a lot of these minis for Rangers of the Shadow Deep. Right. I feel like there's a lot of crossover with, uh, especially with like Game of Thrones styled minis. Uh, yep. There's, it, it's such uh, like good generic fantasy armor that you could snatch any of these minis up and paint them to any color and be able to uh, swap them in and out of different roles. And they're a good size for that too. Yeah, definitely, definitely, I agree. Uh, unlike a lot of other fantasy settings, whether it's Dwarves and orcs and elves, mm -hmm. and um, occasionally humans. Then this one, it's obviously it's almost all humans, except for dire wolves and horses <laughs> and dragons. But uh, yeah, so it it means that there's a lot of variety in their appearance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can definitely sort of cherry pick. Um, Models, but when I like as much as I was making fun of uh, these guys for being off of their stances, super yeah, their yeah. stances. <laughs> um, I feel like there's a lot more movement in these. Like their action poses are so nice. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. they they look like they're in the middle of doing something. Uh, definitely not just in their little NPC like bippity boopity. Right. Yep. But yeah, these these would be great uh, running along a corridor. About to take out a beholder <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, so up close here on the uh, on the close cam, you can see that uh, the militarum green there. I'm just going to turn that around. It's not overbearing. The yellow is still very definitely the the main color. But at the uh, same time, it Sarah gives it says, a, "Are those 28 millimeter or larger minis?" Uh, they're a little bit larger. They're about the in the sort of 30, 32 millimeter range, which is where a lot of other sort of 28 millimeter minis are going. But uh, yeah, they'd fit, fit in very well with a lot, of, uh, a lot of existing stuff out there. I had to make a decision now. Ooh. From, the, um, from his helmet, mm -hmm. he has some uh, sort of plumes coming down. They're not horsehair, they're um, they're ribbons, really. Yeah, so this guy has them, too. Yeah. So I'm wondering what I should, uh, how I should paint them. Was there a picture on there? Is the Sentinels? No. He's looking straight forward. <laughs> the one picture mm. is not what you need. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to go with red there, actually. So I'm not I sure think that. red would look nice. I think yeah. red would be it very, would still work. like, yeah. Still work good. It'd be nice against that green, too. Okay. Do we have? Something have. shiny for all this armor. Sure. Uh, is that? I don't think that's a silver thing. dragon. Ah, that is a shiny. Yep. In front of my face the whole time. That's um. It's the problem I have on my painting desk at home. So I always have the paint scattered all over it, and you sit there and you look for a color that you know is on the table. You used it like. 20 minutes ago. I lose, I do that with and colored like, pencils all the time. Oh. I always know that if I spend more than, like, small, more than two minutes looking for it, that it's always gonna be the one that's closest to me. It's gonna be sitting right here, <laughs> in literally this spot. Uh, oh, there it is. 
Okay, so I'm going to use another contrast here. I'm going to use the Blood Angels red for that uh, plume. And then I can get in and just go crazy with the metallics. Can crazy? Go crazy with the metallics. I crazier, see you go, go, I, I, go I crazier see you go with crazy. The, go crazier with the metallics then. This is my level of crazy. <laughs> Are you going to bring the crazy? No. Oh. Consider it already brought. <laughs> So I did that with this one. I, there was a little bit of the yellow had gone oh. over onto the I definitely did not ribbons. almost lose my paintbrush. That's good. We might have to tone down the crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. um, so I, I just went along with some of the um, base paint, Wraithbone, and painted that back over mm -hmm. so that there'd be a consistent look on the, on the red here. Uh, Dave says red for the burning heart of the Lord of Light. Richard says red for Melisandria. Yep. I think it'll still look all right then if I if I have them in a Renly based based army, but red felt like it was most most sensible. But I think that's the cool thing with the with the Baratheon army. The Starks obviously are very dark and grim and northern. Uh, the the Baratheons I always feel are going to be a little bit more flashy, like the uh, Lannisters. Like you have to have a little bit of flash. Yeah. Like just enough. There we go. It's looking very bright under the, the lights here. Yeah. But I think once I'm done, I might might pop this guy on the, the spinner as is. Yeah. That's Just with these. Okay. I think what I'll probably do once that um, once the blood red dries is come back with um, some of the let's find it. The flesh terror is red contrast and thin that down Ooh, a little bit. That's a good red. Yeah, it's got a little, little bit of purple in it. So it'll be a nice. Um, it's a very blood red. Sorry. What are you doing, Johnny? I'm trying to center it. Earthquake. There we go. Pull away from the shot. Now I'll move it around like this. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you were on that shot. There we go. She's not anymore. <laughs> okay. I think. Oh, just realized. On this sleeve here, there's the opportunity to paint a little bit of the green. Trying to get every time there's a, a bent arm, I always forget that there's a section of the arm that you can see, but that's like hard to paint. Right. <laughs> that's the. <laughs> Wait, where no does that many, section appear? Like yeah, on the outside? Yeah, or? Where, it, where it's like right in here. Oh, okay. And it's Under like, there? Yeah. Something? Right. That's the most difficult like part of minis for me to paint without making a huge giant mess. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then, Let me paint your elbow. <laughs> I'm getting there. Uh, okay. I think for these guys, I'm just going to. Um, oh, where is it? There it is. I'm just going to use. Actually, I already have some of my palette. Uh, some of my favorite silver, which is um, the gunmetal from the Army Painter. And just paint this straight over the. the. Um, Wraithbone Prime. Sweet. So it's going to look kind of bright for the moment, but once it's all on and dry, I'll go back and hit it with a with a black wash. I just realized that I was being all careful around his head for no reason because he's wearing a helmet. Right. I oh, say so you're just going to splash it all over. I'm just going to splash it all over, but not enough to make us have to get rid of our right. okay. <laughs> our mats again. Okay. Um, 
Controlled splashing. Right. Careful splashing. So here's a question for you. Uh-huh. Uh, with that, those um, antlers mm -hmm. on the helmet, do you think those would actually be uh, like deer antlers? So, or, okay, continue. No, no. I, I was mm -hmm. going to be like, put my animal cap on for a moment and yep. be like Steve Irwin it. Okay. Um, they're not the right size to be deer antlers, I don't think. Okay. I think they look more like they're sized to be elk antlers. Okay. Because elks are a little bit larger and a little yep. bit more spaced out. And I feel they would be a little bit like, I feel like if they were deer, they would be bunched tighter. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the way that they uh, work. Because, I mean, you can still have, like, what is this? A one, two, three, four, five. That's a six-point right. um, set of antlers, which is common with, like, white-tailed deer or that kind of stuff. Yep. But they tend to curve up and around a little bit more. Right. Um, but I am also not a expert on fantasy deer. Okay. So... <laughs> 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 They, I mean, if the if the wolves are bigger, yeah, and there the are wolves. there are like a few different like critters that would definitely. I mean, dire wolves actually existed, and there are a few species of. Uh, can't think of the scientific term for the family that deer is in. Um, right, nor can I. <laughs> Sorry, if you, if, you, if, you, if you were fishing there, I, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't help you out. Um, but I'll, I'll think of it later, and I'll be like, "Dang, sure. that was that was my shot to look like a smarty pants." Post it in the comments if anybody knows. But um, yeah, there's a few species that used to used to live um, back in the day, probably around the same time as dire wolves, that were huge. Right. Like, yep. Looked like they were out of Ghibli films. Um, but yeah, what were you gonna say? Oh no! I was going to ask um, if you if you think from a um, like an armoring point of view, Ooh. if they would have been uh, actual antlers or if they would have been uh, like metal copies. That's that's what I think. That's you think they're metal tough. copies. Metal copies. So metal I think copies metal. would allow for the like stylistic. Yep. changes and also you could decide how many points like I don't know if that matters to like the stag uh, uh, stag, the stag knights, knights. but I, I feel like if like the higher ranking you are the more points you'd want like right um, but I don't know that is a really good question because I I mean actual antlers are still sharp and pretty deadly and kind of heavy but if you get caught up in yep. or tangled up into something and you have actual antlers, you could probably, with any of your weapons, break free and continue on in the fight. Right. If you have metal antlers, they're going to be a lot heavier. And if you get caught up in something, yeah, you're probably going to break your neck before you break out. Okay. Yeah. That would be my, I think that would, would be my initial concern with the, with the metal antlers. Someone wrote the the class of animal. Ah. Um, serve a day. Yes. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Saving my brain. Um, Mike, North American elk are bigger than mule deer. They are. They're giant. Um, if you, none of you have ever seen an elk before, they're bigger than you think they are, but they're smaller than moose. But moose are the biggest bigger than you think they are. Yeah. Moose are giant. Giant big moose. <laughs> Scarily so. <laughs> yeah. We saw elk this year when we were out, at, really? uh, out in uh, Yellowstone. They're cool whenever you get to see them. No one yeah. expects them to be big. Nope. There's a, uh, at one of the sort of uh, information centers, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, there's, in the evening, mm -hmm. as things are cooling down, the elk will come in and uh, lie down on the grass, on the cool grass, and nibble away. Yeah. But yeah, they have, they have whole families coming in. That's uh, nice. Uh, definitely cool. Richard Tyler says, nobility, it was usually done in silver or gold and mounted to crown or helmet. Lower nobility, uh, lords, etc., use real horn. Uh, okay. And that would make sense. And gold and silver, also, if you have that on your helmet, I mean, those are such soft metals that 
You could break yeah. free of that. That's true. That's true. That's not going to be too bad. And of course, the other advantage of um, using the real, uh, real horns is that even if they if they got broken, you there's can always a them supply of easy. yeah. Yeah, particularly if you have a lot of if you have hunting preserves of stag. Well, not only that, but uh, deer shed their antlers every season. Every year. Yep. Yeah. Every season. So, that's not too. Pardon? Do we see bison on our trip? We did see bison. Yep, we saw lots of bison. Uh, and at no point did I let my children <laughs> get out and try to pet the get bison. You're no fun. Get within a hundred yards of the bison. Ah, you're the. You're, that's no fun at all. You didn't just release them and be like, "Go pet, go go meet your new cow friends." Run. <laughs> this is how we weed out the weak. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So there's me, the strong, uh, the sensible. <laughs> Dave the Sensible. Dave the Sensible. That would be my <laughs> royal name. Or Jackass. One of the two. But um. Actually, I'm going to paint the half to this hammer metal as well. Would that be... Uh, that's not an unreasonable thing. No, I don't think that's unreasonable. That's quite sensible, as a matter of fact. Sensible, yeah. yeah. I, I need a horned hat. <laughs> I would wear one. I would totally. I don't know if I have access to like like a like a Viking horned kind of hat thing, but I definitely have friends that have little like antler flower crowns. Cool. Could get myself one of those. Totally. You should definitely do that. <laughs> I was sitting here thinking like a Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> hat. I'm sure those are. Available. I could probably get one of those too. See, I was thinking like Flintstones, like the Royal Order of Water Buffalo type thing. All right, yep. Uh, yep. Dave says, in battle, you don't want to um, point bits at an enemy that can they can grab onto and smash your face. And I agree with that entirely. It's part of the yep. reason I was making fun of all of these guys earlier. Because <laughs> uh, they're just delightfully overcommitted to everything <laughs> they do. It was enthusiastic. There, there's enthusiasm. This um, That's a man who knows no fear. He's yep. not even ready to fight. He's just standing. Yep. Standing there. Uh, somebody suggested that he was... Uh, so if you go to the spinner for a sec, these... Uh, um, you don't have to change it, Johnny. That's okay. Um, <laughs> somebody suggested that this guy was standing here with a pimp cane. But he's actually... It is a warhammer. He's resting his hand on top of the warhammer. <laughs> he's but, uh, just... But yeah, I think they've, they've, they've both got a lot of Listen, uh, in every, a lot of swagger. In every battle, <laughs> you have to have at least one person standing at the top of the hill, looking completely okay with everything going on, so that when other people look up at them, they they feel intimidated, right? Scared. Okay. Scared. Well, so that's what the mask is for. Right. You can't see, <laughs> can't see that. The, the <laughs> Stand on that hill and look very intimidating. That's your only job, Joseph. <laughs> go for. I don't know why I named him Joseph, but go. <laughs> that apparently, like, that's now his role. <laughs> that's now his role. You know what? When you fail out of all your other battle classes, <laughs> okay. just, they stick you up there as the resident intimidator. Intimidating standard bearer. Nice. Yeah, no matter what you do, flag the f fly the flag. Yep. Flag the flag and stand there. It's, flag it's the flag. Fine. <laughs> That's fantastic. Fantastic. <sighs> I think uh, yeah, everyone's like bison. They're big. They are. They're the largest ma land mammal in North America. Yeah. Did you know that? Did you know? Did I know? Yep. I don't think I thought about it too much. No, probably not. It's not really something you have to think about if you're not living anywhere near them. <laughs> but they do stand between you and California. I like Cali. You know, I was offered a job once out in California. Yeah? When I, I went on vacation and I went on a, on a sailboat. Yep. El Cruz. I was invited to go up with my uncle because he knew the people and we went out sailing and I had started off in school wanting to learn a lot about wildlife 
um, which is why I know so many random fun facts. Right. Uh, and so I knew how to track um, footprints, whale footprints in the water, okay. um, which dolphins also make. So um, and so do like seals and stuff, except they're they're smaller. So I tracked some of the animals, and they're like, "Do you want to come back every whale season?" <laughs> Awesome. Um, unfortunately, um, flying from Maryland to California to get paid probably less than minimum wage. <laughs> right. <laughs> with no housing <laughs> for was whale it, season. Um, <laughs> didn't. Wasn't a, wasn't a good idea. It didn't seem like quite the best idea. That's fair. Um, That's fair. But I was very flattered. I was like, oh, yay. Excellent. I have learned a, a valuable skill. A valuable skill. That's great. I'm going to ask you about that, in a, about that skill in a second, but it, while I'm just here at the moment, carefully painting the stag on the shield. One of the things I love about all of the Song of Ice and Fire minis is that the shields all have a... Uh, if they have an icon on there, or a sigil, it is sculpted on. No, it's raised, so it's yeah, easier to paint. So it's super easy to paint. Yeah, free handing a whole bunch of uh, stags on shields would be tough. It'd be like that video I put up, where they're just like going to town on the on the guy's like quilted armor or something. Yep. That was insane. That would be mad, mad. Or of course, like you can get some decals or something like that. Uh, no, we go we go one hundred and ten percent. One hundred and ten percent. Yeah. No skimping. No skimping. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, they just came out with a whole like um, you can buy like nail kits that allow you to um, basically transfer design on your nails. I wonder yep. how well that would work for uh, miniatures. Oh yeah, I know, definitely. Because it's uh, with paint. It it is with like acrylics and that kind of stuff. Okay. So. Interesting. Um, now I'm curious. There we go. Look at that. Ta -da. 30 seconds. So yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna let it dry and uh, come back and do a quick highlight on that. But yeah, sorry, um, to go back to the, what you're talking about. <laughs> Whale footprints. Whale footprints. <laughs> yes. I, I, a, I didn't know they had feet. <laughs> and B, I would have suspected that, uh, that they would have disappeared really quickly in the water. Um, so. Am, am I wrong? When a whale is swimming, and they're like doing their little swim thing in the water, or like yeah. a dolphin or something, and their fluke, uh, their their tails yep. are nice and big and flat, um, when they push the water, it creates a distinct pattern in the water okay. um, that looks like a big, smooth, flat spot on the water's surface, Okay. and it leaves a pattern of those big smooth spots going all the way across the ocean's surface, um, like footprints. Okay. So that's why they're called footprints because you can track them to where the animal is. And if it's it's most common with whales, and they'll last longer with whales because it's more force and more pressure disrupting yeah. the water surface. But with um, dolphins, um, it happens as well, and they're just tinier. Wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, but if you know what you're looking for, it's uh, it's pretty easy to spot them. But it's just the way, um, like I imagine if it was a different critter, like sharks, uh, their tails go side to side, obviously. Yep. Um, so it's a different water pattern. I don't, you're not gonna get like shark footprints. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, mammals and whales and right. porpoises and stuff, yeah. Okay, because the tail is, goes up and down <laughs> rather than side to side. Interesting. That's cool to know, thank you. Yeah, now you can go out and uh, when you're on a trip looking for whales, I'll you look know. For, I can look for the footprints. You can look for whale footprints. And then when I start talking about whale footprints, everybody will throw me si over the side for being crazy. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> they I won't. Mean, they won't. I'll point it out to them before. I'll say, see that? See that? That's a whale footprint. Anybody see that? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the hour mark. Halfway We're halfway through. Oh my goodness. We made it. <laughs> it's halfway through. <laughs> I haven't finished any of these guys yet. No, and I'm nowhere close. I'm still going to be <laughs> rushing. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, do you want to take a break and look at some minis? Uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, guys, think, we're going to take uh, a break and look at some minis. So, yeah, what, so this is going to be our intermission break. Um, so in future shows, if uh, one of us needs to 
uh, visit the um, the bathroom Hello. or uh, anything like that, or take a drink. <laughs> With your your uh, definitely not any particular brand nope, of no water. No particular brand of water. Not until we're, until we're sponsored. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, so this will we'll take a break. We'll check out the uh, the minis that people have been posted in, in the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, and uh, yeah, we'll check those out. If we're if either or both of us are on the set, we'll talk about the minis. If we both have to dash off to the bathroom, um, then neither of us will snack. be there. <laughs> or get a snack. This is true. If I'm blood sugar is low. Snacks. I'm sure we could have those while we're talking. It'll be all right. But anyway. <laughs> we hear Leo in the control room tell, saying, hurry up. Oh, look at this. A new format as well. Oh, cool. So uh, Enrique Lozada has been um, painting this um, Trigon. I think it's a Trigon. From uh, one 40,000. Uh, Oh, it's on a video loop! My goodness. We'll need to be quick then, I guess. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Uh, we'll jump in here. Here we go. One of this one is uh, doing some 3D terrain printing. It's got some trees underway on that, that bed there. Chris Holdridge has a... I wonder if this is the Storm Warden. This is a standard, State Marine Standard Baron. Okay. Some uh, new Phobos armor. Marines, I think.
With the second hour of Tainting Happy Little Minis. Two! Paint, Paint Hover! Hover! Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew Johnny was going to do it. He's standing right there. He's waiting. <laughs> waiting for the Paint uh, Hover. We are trucking through. We are. Yeah. We're midway our midway progress. Okay, after sure. an hour. Yeah. We can do that. Trying to pace ourselves. You're already on the second. That's, that's not fair. None of it's fair. Life, life isn't fair. <laughs> You'll survive. I, I will. <laughs> I, I'll make it happen. So there we go. Uh, yeah, uh, the so the guy with the shield there. Um, at the moment, there is a, a non-oil wash um, drying on his silver. So once that's dried, I'll go back and touch up some of those silver areas. Maybe paint some of them um, gold. Okay, Maybe nice. do a, like a gold yeah. trimmer on the uh, the shield there. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, and you've got, it was that, that was the the silver dragon is that what it's called? Yep. So where else is that? Paint? So the silver oh, dragon is, is hiding. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna put that into shot. So that's from the D and D paint set. That looks really cool. It's got a nice little, um, this slight, really slight bluish tinge to it. Yeah. Well, I have underneath right. of it. I have oh. dungeon stone actually. Okay. It was come out a little bit uh, sheer. Okay. So dungeon stone. So that dungeon stone has that. Yep, and then I'll probably go over with the wash just to yeah. kind of make all the details pop with it. Yep, give that that depth to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, nice. So making it happen. Yep. I'm, I'm gonna finish it. Excellent. I have two hours now. I have no excuse. Well, you've got one hour now. <laughs> oh right. Already well, had the hour. First hour out of the way. I need three days and a basket <laughs> full of snacks. Basket full of snacks. Fantastic. <laughs> I thought you were going to say cupcakes, but cupcakes right, could be they, snacks. They're snacks, yeah. 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 Um, and sure. that is the proper way for me to paint minis <laughs> and get them done. Excellent. Um, Walter says, will it still be Tuesdays and Thursdays? No, unfortunately, it's just going to be Thursdays. But fortunately, that means we can have two whole hours. Yes. Yes. So we talked about it uh, all as a team last week. Uh, actually, and the week before, I think as well. Uh, and we like the the things that two hours is going to be able to give us. Um, we've got some ideas that we'll we'll be bringing in slowly over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, I just meant that the two hours was the way for us to go, um, particularly with us freelancers who aren't yeah. here in the office every day. Of every week, but uh, yeah, I think it'll be good. It will be great. There's going to be slight uh, sort of hiccup to your usual arrangements, and we apologize for that. Anybody who watches this during lunch, <laughs> particularly during lunch on Tuesdays, uh, but I think there's going to be a good value in there. Huh? Do -do -do. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been using that, the slap bass? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. We can we can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ash, Ash has been using that for a while. <laughs> okay. There we go. These. This guy's got some very interesting um, sort of armor plates and quilted armor underneath those plates. Yeah, getting those tiny little, I feel like nothing makes me uh, want to wash all of the paintbrushes more <laughs> than trying to do teeny tiny little details and realizing that the bristles are... Right, yes. 
I almost, as you lick yours. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I don't understand. Actually, I just realized I'm going to grab. Uh, I realize now why you lick them. It keeps them nice and firm. Nice and pointed. I'm still not going to lick them. No, that's fair enough. I don't, I'm not saying you have to. I'm going to use another contrast paint, Saigor Brown here, for the back of the shields. I think that's going to be a good... Just, I wish I could just one. have him lift his lift his staff just a little, little bit out of the way so I could just paint his <laughs> armpit. How do, and then I get paint on his armpit, but not in the armpit place I needed to get paint. Not in the spot. <laughs> the Sh good thing he's about struggling the, to paint his pits. I am. The good thing about the contrast paints, though, is that even though I've, I've fudged up a little bit here, um, they're thin enough to where if I go back with a with a dry brush, I can swoop it out of the way real quick. Yeah. As long as I'm quick about it. And I mean, who cares about a, a stag knight with a pit stain? Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of, uh, particularly with, with what you were going to call him before. <laughs> if we use that reference. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to make fun of me forever. Not Listen, forever. Rick left. I was supposed to, the, the, the making fun of, we were, we were supposed to bond over not making fun of me. Oh, I, my apologies. <laughs> I, I, I did not get that memo. I did not get that memo. Uh, That's okay. Dave says, fudged up. Whoa, <laughs> what language. My favorite is son, uh, son of a Batch of Cookies. Right. I use that teaching quite often. There was one point where my wife was convinced that we should definitely teach our children to say, shut the front door. <laughs> and I suggested that it would be not, good, not be a good idea. Because they would mainly say it around other people. Uh, Okay, so you're still drying there. Mr. Super Colorful Guy is all dry, so I might get started on him. Oh, good old what's-his-face, the Super Colorful Guy? Super Colorful Guy. What's-his-face, the Super Colorful Guy. It's probably Sir something, but... Nope, I think it's just... Mr. What's-his-face? The Super Colorful Guy. Okay. It's a title now. One of the great things as well with these, the detail on these miniatures, mm -hmm. is there's a set of antlers sculpted on the pauldron here, Ooh. which is very nice. And I'm super glad that you are painting them instead of me. <laughs> well, I'm just painting it over with silver and then I'll put a wash to pick it out. I'm Simple just trying techniques. to... Like, I, I like how I started off in my like little holder, and then I, I somehow I don't remember taking him out of the holder. Oh, you took him out to put him on here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Thank you for keeping track of my brain for me. <laughs> no That's, worries. And now I'm trying so hard. I'm like, when did I make this mm. difficult for myself? But now I'm committed. Right. <laughs> What's that with the? Uh... Trying to make his little belt stand out. Okay. Look more fine. leathery, I guess, as you do. Yep. Yeah. Honestly, I, I'm just waiting for the end when I put a wash over them because I feel like that'll hide all of my sins. Um, <laughs> painting sins, right? Okay. Sure, yeah. yeah. The, uh, <laughs> it, it is a great thing that washes can, can really help that. It gonna... tie, ties things together. Um, most of the, most of the, the painting sins mm -hmm. occur where two, two different surfaces meet, two different colors meet. Yep. So the, the wash, having a wash that goes in there and fills that in and shades out from there. Just makes it all look it, it just much really, more yeah, uniform. It, it tightens that up a lot. 
which is great. It's like Very putting helpful. an Instagram filter over, <laughs> <laughs> over my mini. <laughs> that would be a great Instagram filter. Non oil wash. Agrax Earthshade. <laughs> would that get you on Instagram more? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I'm in there a fair bit. Um, but. Yeah. I think we could actually have to talk to people who do, who do filters and see if they can do that. I will admit, I do, I do like filters like uh, the lo-fi. Oh, yeah. Uh, filter. I think they're fun. I use them occasionally to bump up the, the saturation or to fix. I, I prefer if, like, if I'm putting a, if I'm editing a photo in Photoshop or something, uh, I don't like doing um, like huge graphic edits or anything like that, but yep. I do like color like color in a shadow correcting. Yep. If you get too much of a shadow or too less of a shadow or something like that, whenever you're trying to take a picture, or whatnot, and you're like, man, just make it like how my eyeballs see it. <laughs> just exactly. That'd be fantastic if you could do that. <laughs> just cameras have come a long way right. but still not I am not uh, long I I do not typically do much of the the photo editing that's not really my my skill set with photography Right <laughs> I think that I haven't really been on that side of a camera in quite a bit Right I Had a bunch of fun taking some photos of the the stormbird this morning hmm. just for my records I might put those on Instagram later today I think you should. That would be cool. We'll see what people think. I think they'll like it. Good. Actually, these are. <laughs> like I said, if I'm able to paint three. How much time do we have? 40 minutes. If I'm able to paint three of these guys today. You get three of them done? I get three of them done in two hours. That's and there intense. Are 40. 40 how many models? 50 odd models in the box? Sure. So that'll take about, that would be about 60 hours total. No. What am I doing? My math is terrible. <laughs> Not math. Chat, and quick, do math. 34 hours? Something like that. How many minis do you have? I, 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 I don't know. Uh, there are, let's see, there's 48, 51, there are 55 minis in the box, I think. So, I know it's divide that by three, which is going to be 18, nearly 19, yeah. times, and times that by two, so 38. Let's say 40 hours for the whole thing, including <laughs> basing. That's amazing. <laughs> 40 hours to paint a whole army. That is super cool. I'm never going to ask you for help with equations. Don't. <laughs> Don't. I mean, to be fair, no one should ever ask me to help with <laughs> equations. Every time I play D&D, &D, I always, like, I have to count on the thing. I'm a very visual person. Yeah. I, like, I am not bad at math as long as I can visualize everything. I'm just not very good at mental math. So, like, I'll make a roll and everyone will be like, okay, and? I'm like, hold on. And, and this? And am I, am I changing that for anything? Am I, and by that point in time, like, the DM's like, I've done the math for you. It's, yep. <sighs> like, okay, I'm it's like playing like, like D&D with just an, an absolute child. <laughs> I, I'm visualizing a, a field full of seven, with 17 sheep. How many more sheep do I have to add to that? Three more sheep? Okay. <laughs> Let me count them again. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that what you're 70. saying? Or is it more um, like. Uh, it's more like I have to write everything out. Like if you give me okay, a really right. long equation, I can do the equation. I just I have to write it out to keep track of everything. Okay, right. Cool. Um, but when I'm like rolling dice and stuff, um, I have friends who can just like. Like I feel like they're not even actually counting. I feel like they have like a telekinetic connection with their dice, right? Like uh, they'll roll and they'll be like, "It was 19 plus my modifier." 
and this and that. And so obviously it's all done in like three seconds and 20, go. Well, if you, if you say it confidently enough and you pick up your <laughs> dice really quickly, nobody's going to argue, it's, right? Yeah. Um, whereas I roll dice. 19. Nice. <laughs> I, Natural 20! <laughs> Hooray! And then I'll roll and I'll be like, hold on. <laughs> and that's a three. Yeah. It's a plus a, what's my modifier again? <laughs> what, was it a plus or was it a minus? Yeah. It's written on my sheet. Shoot, my sheet's like three pieces of notebook paper and five post-it <laughs> notes. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> You know you're in trouble when your character has moved onto post-it notes. I'm a pleasure to play D&D with. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm not confident this character is going to survive, so I'm not going to write <laughs> a, an actual character sheet for him. Uh, no, I lose, actually, I'm, uh, I don't lose my character sheets. I doodle on my character sheets. All ah, right. So I will have, in all of the margins, will just be little doodles of my character. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And all of their items. That works, um, I'm sure. Listen, if I doodled on my math worksheets, I'm going to doodle on the character sheet. Oh, yeah, for sure. You don't get any, just because you're the DM doesn't mean that I'm not going to do the same amount of respect I did for my <laughs> fifth grade algebra teacher. Oh, okay. Um, I, would, I would hope that you have more, but if it's the same, so be it. I so bribed it my geometry teacher yeah. for extra credit. Oh. I made pie. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, uh, well, I could if, if if Rick was my DM, he'd probably let me uh, bribe him. But my sure. my uh, my DM for the games I play most of the time would absolutely not take to bribe. Not take bribes. <laughs> I would be like rolling poorly and be like, "I'll bring you cookies next time. I swear, <laughs> how much is that worth?" <laughs> it wouldn't work out. It wouldn't work. No. Oh, okay. Um, what if you actually had the cookies there, though? I don't. I don't know. I, I would have to. I'd have to try it out. You bust them out. Yeah. That's why I play bards because my natural chaotic instinct allows me to have a little bit more of a <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> a little more bluffing going on. And then you do this. Absolutely not. But would you do it for a Scooby snack? <laughs> a DM snack? Well, <laughs> gummy D&D &D dice. I mean, right. <laughs> Let me change this. Gummy D&D &D dice. I've actually table. looked up how to make gummy D&D &D dice. Okay. There is a slight problem in that plan. Yeah. And that is they don't actually have, they have molds to make your own resin dice, but that's for resin. It's not for food. Right, yep. Yeah. So they're um, not food safe. Is what it's not food safe. Right. And there is not a proper mold. I would have to order custom molds. Okay. And that would be hundreds of dollars for me to make myself mm. one set of gummy D&D &D mm. dice. Yep. Yeah. I, um, the biggest concern I have is that somebody would think that they were reaching for a gummy D&D &D dice. And I would they'd be put totally it, okay. I have they'd, they'd pick it up and Leona. they'd toss it in their mouth. Oh, um, delicious. And Cracking teeth. <laughs> Cracking teeth is what I'm thinking. Um, let's or choking see. on it. <laughs> Byron says you don't write out your character like a diary. <laughs> Maps and magic <laughs> items. I. What makes you think I have an organized diary? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am a torn up notebook at best. Um, Fifteen post-it notes on what used to be a calendar. The calendar is out of date by mo many years. Um. <laughs> well, the cool thing about calendars, and the calendar, big calendar won't tell you this, <laughs> is that every six years, you can use that same calendar again. Oh, see, so I just have to wait. I just have to wait. Um, let's see, hold on. Oh, it's going too quickly. I'm trying, I'm trying so hard to read everything. Saving money since 1982. <laughs> <laughs> you need six calendars. I'm telling you. Dave says, I feel like I'm getting slower over time, maybe because I become more of a perfectionist. Right. Um, John says, Dave, you could knock the whole box out much quicker with assembly line style with way less brush color changes. This is true. Um, so it could be closer to that 34. Also, yes, dark lip. <laughs> I love 
lipstick. Uh, <laughs> always living here for the bright red lipstick. Uh, Mike Becker says, there's a food safe D20 mold, and I'm gonna need you to post that in our group. <laughs> you should totally do that, Mike. So I can find it and come in one day with a big bag of edible D20 and just sit here in front of Dave, crunching and munching on them. Um. <laughs> it sounds like a plan. It sounds like a plan. You should totally do that, Mike. Um, That'd be great. Because I would totally make just delicious gummy. Yep. Um, use ice molds for the gummies. So that could probably work. I haven't found D&D &D dice ice molds um, that go like all the way around. Um, I could probably work around it though if they did like a full one. If I was making candies though, I could not use, uh, so like gummies and gelatin work one way um, where ice molds would work, but if I were to make actual like hard candies, I couldn't use them. Mm -hmm. um, because you have to have temperature safe. Fun right. fucking fact. Um, if you were ever thinking about making your own edible D&D dice. No, apparently, I, I actually know somebody who's working on that at the moment. Yeah. DM power move. Yeah. Can you imagine <laughs> being, like, playing D&D with your GM and they're like roll, you roll for something, and they just pick up the dice and eat it. <laughs> eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it was a nat twenty. No, it wasn't. You're oh. all dead. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be a great pal move. I'm. This is why no one lets me DM for them. <laughs> this is why I haven't been a DM yet. Is right. because I would eat the dice. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, everything awesome. we fight is just things from past painting, ha painting happy little minis right. that I pull out of a hat without even looking and just place it. It's like, oh my god, we're facing that X-Wing? <laughs> <laughs> well, David Bowie's in there, too. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. That's, that would be fantastic. Is it um, Jareth? Yeah, it is David Bowie as Jareth, as Jareth. actually. Yep. Yeah, from when we painted the labyrinth. Um, <laughs> labyrinth set. <Yeah. laughs> fantastic. Well, it wouldn't be as, as bad as uh, as Rick's collection, which would have the well, those enormous guys from the the Hate board game. Oh God, that would be so scary. Yep, all the tyrants. Yeah, and mine is just like everything I've ever painted here in like ten different dinosaur figures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. The land that mini painting forgot. <laughs> It's a special kind of dungeon you're all trapped in. <laughs> yep. It plays by no rules. Fantastic. Um, maybe one day I'll stream that. One day I'll put together a group and it'll just be like a, a small little like stream going, Gretchen finally gets the chance to DM. <laughs> that would be great. You should totally do it. Um, I just have to get willing victims or players. Players, they're called, yes. Yeah, are they? Yes, not victims. <laughs> That's later. <laughs> that comes later. Uh, You're right. Who who suggested the uh, the production line? Um, let's scroll up. Do 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 do. John Dickerman. John Dickerman, yep. Totally John. That would be uh, that would definitely cut down the amount of time. Oops. You can always get it to the point where you, if can you did a... Toss a paintbrush at me. Oh. Just, just... <laughs> I reach over and... There we go. Hello. It, it is season two, Paint Harder. Yeah, exactly. Was, yeah. Take that. <laughs> <laughs> Had to wait until you'd closed all the lids. <laughs> okay. So I think one of the things that we're um, we were talking about 
maybe doing, maybe adding to the show, is once a month we'll do a, a little segment that connects to the uh, painting article that I do in um, Game Trade Magazine. That's fun. The uh, painting Happy Little Minis painting article. So I think that'll be a, a cool thing. It's, right now I'm going through um, a lot of the like the starting aspects. So the last couple of articles have been about sort of cleaning up miniatures, removing mold lines, gluing them together, what kind of glues to use, that kind of thing. Because I know that in our group we have a lot of uh, a lot of folks who have just started on their painting journey, uh, which is really cool. So if we can do things that that help them out along the way, uh, the latest. Oh, the article that's coming in the September issue is about priming. That'd be good. Uh, so I know a lot it? of people have questions about priming. Yeah. Uh, who was asking before? Uh, yeah, was it uh, C.L. Franklin in uh, the YouTube chat asked about priming earlier? So we'll be able to talk a little bit about that and maybe do a, a quick sort of demo video that we can splice in somehow. That would be good. <laughs> We've now gone to like a philo philosophical discussion about why Americans don't appreciate art. <laughs> I think that. I, speaking of broad brushes, <laughs> I, I'm going to keep quiet on that one. I, as yeah. someone who uh, does a lot in the artist community, uh, <laughs> as someone who's neither American nor art. <laughs> 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 oh, no, they didn't quite fit in. Okay, so I'm just waiting for uh, for washes to dry now. Or should I start another guy? I'm, or I'm getting this guy there. I'm getting him. He's happening. Should I start on? Dolly Day Eighty. Sure. In a second. There we go. Shira Errol, who is one of the NCU's, the non-combat units. The Lady of Haystack Hall says, uh, sworn to House Baratheon, first Renly, then Stannis. Um, Is she in the show? Hmm? Is she in the show? Uh, no. I don't believe so. Uh, I, I will admit, I, got a, I am currently halfway through the second book, so I'm not uh, actually familiar with her character. So I apologize. Uh, but Shira... Lady of Haystack Hall. Uh, whenever Shira claims the uh, letters zone uh, of the tactics board, you may remove one condition token from one friendly combat unit. Uh, whenever she claims the uh, money bags uh, zone on the tactics board, you may place one condition token on one en enemy combat unit. So just to look at those two zones quickly. So normally the, the letter has draw two tactics cards and place one condition token on an enemy unit. So if she claims that, you get to do both of those things and also remove one condition token from a friendly combat unit, which is cool. And here with the money bags is restore up to three wounds and remove one condition from a token from a friendly unit. And at the same time, she can also place a condition token on an enemy unit. So that's, uh, that's nice, just a nice little bolster of the uh, using these two areas on the card. And she is, like most of the NCUs, is three points. Which is pretty cool. Excellent. And the other NCU is Alistair Florent, the Lord of Brightwater. Uh, Alistair begins the game with two order tokens on him. He has all shifting loyalties. Okay, after Alistair claims a tactic zone, after resolving that zone's effects, you may remove an order token from him to move him to an empty tactic zone or switch tactic zones with an NCU already on the tactics board. Mm, that's cool. So you'll be able to use, so twice per game, you'll be able to get them stuck into two of those in a, in a turn. Yeah. So that'd be cool. You could jump on this, restore up to three wounds, and remove a condition token on a particular unit, and then 
that might already be in combat. So you could, and then if this space is empty, you could switch to that. And then a friendly unit make a free attack action. Very cool. He is, oh, yeah, that's how it works. He's four points. <laughs> <laughs> Quite strong there. That's cool. I like that. I don't like this wash. Still drying. Okay. <laughs> Lady Shira Oshara has a purple, purple dress on. So I'm going to uh, take that opportunity to use some of the, some more. Oh no! Mini painting paints. studio says, "Oh, I just realized the new two-hour time cuts into my regular stream." Oh, oh sorry, Josh. We didn't think about that. Only one day, though. Only one day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only on Thursday. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I guess there are a couple of things we didn't didn't think about. We didn't think of it all. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try this. I try some of the contrast major's purple. Let's see what. That's quite nice. But it's pretty pale on there, so. I think this might be one to come back with with a um, the slightly darker purple mixed in. I want to say slightly darker. It's actually quite a bit darker. The shyish purple. So I think a 50-50 mix of those would probably be the way to go. Uh, we'll get this done anyway. And now I'm now How's I'm grooving going? a little bit. See, now we got that wash going on. The sins are being hidden. Right. It's it's coming around. It look, right. It's looking really nice now. Excellent. That is looking cool. Once all the wash is done, I'll let it dry a little bit, and then I'll go back, start touching stuff up. Yeah. Do I actually have time? Uh, I think so. How many minutes? Twenty. Oh, I thought okay. you said three, and I was like, oh. What? <laughs> oh. That last I went super quick. I tried but, uh, so hard. <laughs> But no, you can do it. There we go. I think that's a good starting point for, for her. Honestly, my favorite part is dirtying everything up. Yeah. Doing all of that very cool weathering. Well, it's much more, it's, it's less stress. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, it's supposed to look worn. It's supposed to look this one way or the other. It's a yep. little bit of brown on your cloak. You're a warrior man. Warrior you're, man. You're supposed to. <laughs> warrior man. <laughs> Coming soon to Saturday mornings <laughs> near you. Warrior man cartoon. <laughs> what are you, what are you With stag night. <laughs> And friends, what do I think about uh, about I the cartoon know, I idea? Or? We said he, uh, you'd sing the. Uh, you were talking about singing earlier. I was like, well, you. What would be the the intro? Oh, to Warrior the theme Man. Song, yeah. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I don't know if I can go that far. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Warrior. Uh, it's just that on repeat. <laughs> right, yeah, just over and over and over again. Fantastic. That would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to reach down here and hope that I can find. Actually, now I'm going to lift up the paints so that I'm not leaning over. Uh, gold and. What color be this? There we go. A good enough color. One thing that I think that's going to be pretty cool for us to do in a, in a few weeks' time, maybe a month's time, mm -hmm. uh, Osprey are, are releasing, Osprey Games are releasing yep. um, the new version of, or well, the sort of the updated version of um, Gaslands. Uh, Gaslands is a game that's designed to be played with um, matchbox cars. 
Matchbox that or Hot Wheels cars? Sounds really fun. It does sound amazing. Are we going to paint cars? Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> I, well, I think it'd be really cool to do it. Um, I used to have the sets. Do they still make the Hot Wheels sets that you yeah. like build and put together? I don't think, like, I remember seeing them in Walmart all the time. Oh, yeah. I don't remember seeing them anymore. Yeah. No, you can, um, you can f still find lots and We'd lots and lots and lots of those. those. Yeah. Like my siblings and I. Right. Oh. <laughs> Because we'd want to make the best, and then we'd we'd start fighting over pieces or how to put it together. Or... Excellent. That's exciting. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, so there's a company that does um, does a lot of miniatures connected with the the games that Osprey makes. Uh, is North Star Miniatures, and they're doing a plastic sprue of weapons, and armor and other things, like drivers and crew members and a little motorcycle, that kind of thing. I could actually have a driver to torture in my Hot Wheels. Yep, exactly. <gasps> so I think it'd be cool if we uh, if we mess around with some, and then we can, when you're talking about you enjoying the weathering and the making it looking look beat up, uh -huh. I think that'd be perfect for that. That'll be fun. That'll be super fun. Um. Johnny says they still do make those matchbox sets. He put one together for his son for Christmas. Um, Byron says, don't forget to glue the wheels. <laughs> yeah. Well, the fun part, uh, the, in my gaming group, some people glue the wheels, some people don't glue the wheels, some people glue them to bases, that kind of thing. But we, we generally all agree that if you don't glue the wheels, it's still a toy. Whereas if you glue the wheels, it's now a model. Uh. I want model. my model to. <laughs> <laughs> my. I think it, I think it's everybody can do do it however they like, and it's all okay. Of course, I am of the sorts where, like, I played a, a D and D game where my uh, dungeon master just had like a pile of those little dollar toys that you get. Yeah. It was like from the fantasy section. Oh, okay. Like, Choose your fighter. <laughs> All right. Okay. I want the lopsided unicorn. I want the leftover Monopoly mm. piece. Um, so awesome. anything with actual miniatures is just like, oh hey. Sounds really good. Yeah. The incredible step up. I try. Nice. This guy has got a lot of little. Uh, Sculpted detail on the pauldrons, on his helmet, on the, the things. So I'm just going through and painting all of these with uh, with hammered copper from uh, Vallejo. First, it's in a really nice kind of obviously copper color. So it's got that orange, but it's got great great coverage, and it's an awesome base for putting gold over the top of. Um, This gives an, an extra, excellent depth. Uh, Mike says, if I can't roll my car, then it's no good. And she <laughs> says, models with moving parts is peak hobby, surely. <laughs> the chat is with me on this one. Yeah, yeah. sticking with the Gotta. thing. That's fine. As I said, each to their own. Each to their own. <laughs> What's that? I said, but Dave is right. No. No. I will let you do yours your way, as long as you don't make me do your do mine your way. <laughs> That's always my approach. No, just a little bit there. Oh, sorry. Dust. Leona has uh, is saying something, but my hearing is terrible. Okay. Does dust have moving parts? Does dust have moving parts? Dust, uh, dust minis. Uh, I don't think they do. Not a lot of them. Maybe the, some of the uh, some of the larger vehicles might. Rotating turrets, um, guns that elevate. 
but uh, I'm not exactly sure on that. I don't think the guys that are this, the same size as like Hot Wheels cars do. Of course, one of the advantages in playing a game like Gaslands when you're, um, the wheels move on your car <laughs> is if you need to, you can occasionally nudge, <laughs> nudge your car across the battlefield. Hey, wasn't that for the... No. No, it's always been there. That's where I moved it to. You saw me move it. Jeez. <laughs> and no, I'm not saying that it's for cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that people that don't glue their wheels have an advantage in that way. Should they wish to. But I think that'd be fun. That'd be cool. Something, something a little bit different. Says, uh, some people tell me the mind's eye is the best way to play, but I just love all the minis and they just keep getting better. I yep. think it makes it more fun and deep. I feel like you get more attached to your character if you've painted it. Yeah. Um, to some uh, my D &D, to some of my D and D groups, um, Chagrin, they rarely get miniatures on the table. They are slow enough as it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And yeah, everyone, everyone watch mini painting studios when they're live tonight. Just fill your whole day up with with uh, painting streams. Yep. Honestly. Exactly. Just just do that. Just, you don't need to work. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody needs to work. Uh, one of cheers says my D and D group gets annoyed sometimes as I'm the only one with a fully painted mini. Well, that sounds like people need to either get on board or in their, you know, for the holidays coming up, what better gift than a mini of their character? Yep. I was going to suggest maybe have a, uh, have a painting party. Have everybody over to <gasps> your house, party. Drew, and they can all sit down and paint their, uh, paint their mini. I like that. It's a good plan. It would be fun. There we go. So I think I'm going to get this one guy finished. Totally. <laughs> and the other guys will be a l close to. I'll be there. I will. There, there will be You'll a be mini. Yeah. 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 I, think you, I think you'll have it finished. Getting, getting down to the Y, you can tell. I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, it's going to happen. <laughs> it is going to happen. It's going to... Pardon? Oh. Ah, uh, David says, I listen to streams and such while I work. It's great. I'm nerding it up in a sports store. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Sporty people can also be nerdy people. My friends say that I am a nerd jock. Right. Um, because I like doing sporty things, but I like doing nerdy things. And they make fun of me for finding the nerdiest sport things <laughs> to do. I They're like, say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leanna's already like team nerd jock. <laughs> um, they, they're like, out of all the things, like, you could have... <laughs> you sword fight and you... <laughs> You could have done anything else in the world, but no, you found the nerdiest thing of them all to turn into, like, athleticism. Good job. Well Go done. team. Well done. Uh, I could have been a cheerleader. I could have done that. I didn't. No. <laughs> I grew up in Australia where we don't have cheerleaders. I recently found out that that's, like, a purely American thing, and I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> like it, sh it shouldn't have shocked me as much. It, like the more I thought about it, the more I was like, makes sense. But I had no idea. <laughs> yep. I didn't realize at all that that was just cheerleaders were an American thing. I, uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, in in other countries, they just cheer stuff that's good. You know, like, yay. I, yeah, well, I mean, not just, cheerleaders, but fans. Like yeah. it's like 
if you perform well. Like in, in England, obviously, it's, there's lots of singing involved at, yeah. at soccer games, <laughs> football games. Mm. My bad. But uh, yeah, the additional encouragement generally isn't required. Someone said 10 minutes. TikTok, oh. Oh. TikTok. TikTok. Why you gotta do this to me? <laughs> now, now I'm looking at I'm like, what else can I do? But at gold, we're gonna add gold. Gold hides things. Distracts. Oh. No. I did not. You need to get better at mixing things. What? The electric <laughs> football game? Oh, who, who's asking that question? Wait. Um, is it up there? I don't think it's on there. YouTube. Uh, YouTube. I mean, it's on Facebook. Facebook? <laughs> Facebook? Uh, Facebook? Was it from Kurt? <laughs> I don't know because in our, where I'm looking. In the game, uh, in the game of um, kids on bikes, that we played. Uh, each of the characters had, had three items in their backpack. Oh. And one of Kurt's was the um, original like ColecoVision uh, football game, electronic Ours handheld froze. football game. <laughs> so I just thought people were quiet. <gasps> right. <laughs> then I realized we weren't moving. Very quiet. <laughs> Super focused. <laughs> oh well. We'll get that sorted for next time. It's okay, I'll squint. I can... You can kind of make it? Um... It doesn't have the person. It doesn't have the person. Okay. I can kind of read it. But yeah, so... I didn't, I didn't actually see one because we were playing uh, Theater of the Mind's Eye. But I imagined one. <laughs> if that's what you're talking about. I'm talking about something different, let me know. And I will try to remember. <laughs> That was a lot of long days. Oh, sing the Manchester United's... Oh. <laughs> sing the, the... My baby takes the morning train. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Great. That's scary. That's two uh, Euro trip references in, uh, in one week. I had one the other day. You can do it. I'm just terrified all the time. I don't think there's anything else really. Put it on the shelf. I, yeah, I'll just I'll add him. He's there. Good. He's ready. He's gonna cool. beat someone up. Okay. Emerge from the woods with his antlers. Right. <laughs> Antlered man. Right. Fantastic. I will be finished with this guy in a sec. There we go. He deserves a little gold belt buckle. He does de deserve, a, he needs to treat himself. He does. Gold belt buckle it up. I think he's done a good job there. Try to get this to work. So I think, uh, yeah, it's been, been fun messing around with a whole bunch of models in one stream. I think they look great. Yeah, it come along quite well. It's it, the combination of the the contrast paints, <gasps> the, the fact that the... Oh, it works now. It works. Yeah. Put the stream back. Now she's not going to talk to me again. <laughs> <laughs> Mike says you're his hero. <gasps> Which Mike? I need to Mike know. Becker. <gasps> Thanks, Mike. Best of luck with your uh, job app application. It goes well. <laughs> Walter says, "Yes, sing, Gretchen. I don't know what I'm supposed to be singing. I the Manchester United song. I don't know that song. It's a it's a thing from uh, from the movie Euro Trip. I don't think I've seen that movie. Okay. Well, they uh, but they go in. They start. They walk into a Manchester United um, themed like, themed pub, and everybody turns around and." They have to try and explain their way out of it, and so when they start singing it, it's uh, it's actually nine to five by Dolly Parton. 
such a fantastic, mm. fantastic scene. There we go. Okay. You oh, know, this guy as well. I'm actually really like it's really cool to me to see how I painted yellow differently than you painted yellow, but we both ended up with a similar yellow. Yeah. Yep. I think it. Uh, the yellow is nice and close. They'd fit well in a in an army. So there we go. Bam. Hooray, Baratheons. They're looking pretty good. And I have, we haven't even we haven't gone back good. and done any. Um, Sort of main highlights on no. the, the silver, or haven't done any kind of highlights. Yeah. But yeah, looks good. <laughs> Sorry, can we just go back to the spinner for a second? <laughs> this guy here, I just noticed from that that particular angle, he was just like, yeah. I told you, <laughs> wide open, wide open. He is over committing. Yeah, I feel like he's, he's dodging a blow at the same time. He's got to be doing that. Maybe. Yeah. I hope so. I'm not sure. He's just ready to just, he's... He's ready to get down. The shield is down. His hand is up. <laughs> there, he's off balance. There, mm. Yeah. He's going so down. Gotta keep that shield tight. <laughs> Little actions with the hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put a spike on the end and stab people with it. That's what he needs to do. Yeah. Okay. There, yeah, yeah. We'll get to that next time. He's in prime... Prime position to just, just right. Kick just the bucket. Take it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, so, th thanks everybody for watching um, yeah. our very first Too painting happy little minis two. <laughs> Paint harder. harder! <laughs> um, <laughs> that's for you, Johnny. That's for you. <laughs> that's for you. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, uh, if you have. Um, some minis that you'd uh, like to be seen in the show, make sure you join Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. Uh, one of us will add you, uh, and then you can start putting in some minis that you've been painting. Yeah. Uh, we'll show them during the show. Uh, there was a little bit of a miscommunication today. We will communicate <laughs> further. And we'll work out what the format of that is going to be. Uh, but it'll be absolutely fine. Uh, we'll get there in the end. But uh, thanks very much to everybody who did, uh, who has posted their minis in the group over the last week. Yeah. Uh, it was very cool to see all those things. Um, and More minis. More minis. More minis. Let's see more of them. Uh, so, yeah. You can go ahead and do that. Yeah. Is this, does this bring us to the end? I think it might. The, first, the very first the episode? The very first episode of the two-hour... Paint harder! <laughs> yes. It does bring us to the end of that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for coming out. See you next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> they, they came out online. Right? They did. They did. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming out online. <laughs> Rather than actually coming <laughs> to the studios here in sunny Tumania, Maryland. Uh, <laughs> next time, maybe you can come to the studios. We'll <laughs> you just that. walk in on Thursday and there's like 30 people sitting there with minis. Totally. You should definitely do that. Live studio audience. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Okay, uh, so that's that's pretty much it. We've been painting minis from uh, Song of Ice and Fire from uh, Come On, the Baratheon starter set, which will be available in October, uh, and roughly a hundred dollars, I think, for the starter set for yeah. and for that many minis, that's fifty-five a beautifully sculpted, very good uh, price. super high detail minis um, that is fantastic to paint. Yeah, cool, excellent. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, would Would you like me to do the honors? I. Actually, yes. <laughs> I'm Dave. And I'm Gretchen. And this was Painting Happy Little Minis. We'll see you at the pit. So we'll see you at the yeah. game store. I was, was waiting for that? you to do it. You want me yeah. to do it? Oh, okay. I, swear, when you, normally, I thought you were going to do it. We'll get it right eventually. Guys. <laughs> <laughs>